one, zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff. Uh, uh, it not shocks, but it brings people into the reality. The Apollo 11 moon landing in July 1969 was a major triumph of human endeavour, engineering and science. It was the moment the entire world had been waiting for. The Apollo lunar missions may have terminated in 1972, but the moon has remained a source of fascination for NASA and scientists worldwide. On NASA's public website, Apollo is consistently towards the top of all search inquiries. In recent years, NASA has shipped over 500 Apollo lunar samples to experts all around the world for continuing investigation. Every year, a small number of new scientific publications are written that provide insights and updates on what we've learned about the Moon from these samples. The program has even become a cultural reference point. How often have you heard the question, if they can send a man to the Moon, why can't they? Even though it's been over half a century after the first manned lunar landing, NASA hasn't been able to repeat the feat. What actually happened? In this video, we look at the real reasons why NASA never returned to the Moon. In the early 1960s, the United States was interested in sending humans to the Moon. The mission was formally launched on the 25th of May 1961, when President John F. Kennedy addressed a special joint session of Congress. I believe this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before the end of this decade of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth, he said. The history of NASA's missions to the moon, however, would be incomplete without mentioning the space race between the Soviet Union and the United States. Just weeks before Kennedy's speech, Russia launched Yuri Gagarin into space in a spacecraft that orbited the Earth, claiming the title of the first man in space. The United States wanted to return the favour, which secured widespread support for Kennedy's moon program, known as the Apollo mission. And five years after the President's address, NASA was ready to launch the first unmanned Apollo mission. However, when the space agency attempted to launch a manned mission from the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, a fire broke out, killing three astronauts. But that failure would not dissuade a determined country. 18 months later, Apollo 7, the first crew mission, successfully orbited the Earth and tested the majority of the complex equipment that would transport the men to the Moon. While many people recall the specific Apollo mission that landed humans on the Moon for the first time, NASA actually conducted a manned mission that carried astronauts to the far side of the Moon in March 1969, but there was no landing involved. This was the Apollo 8 mission. The Apollo 11 mission lifted out from the Kennedy Space Center on the morning of July 16, 1969, with the entire world watching. On board were two men who would earn global fame, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, the mission commander. However, there was another astronaut whose name may not be familiar, 39-year-old Michael Collins. After a 76-hour journey, Apollo 11 arrived in lunar orbit on July 19. The next day at 1.46 p.m., the lunar module Eagle, manned by Armstrong and Aldrin, separated from the command module, where Collins remained. He would not walk on the moon, but the Eagle began its descent to the moon's surface two hours later. The module landed on the southern border of the Sea of Tranquility at 4.17 p.m. Armstrong instantly radioed one of the most famous communications ever received to mission control in Houston, Texas. The Eagle has landed. Armstrong opened the hatch of the lunar module at 10.39 p.m., five hours ahead of schedule. While he began his descent down the module's ladder, a television camera attached to the craft filmed his movements and sent the signal back to Earth, where hundreds of millions of people watched with intense excitement. As Armstrong walked down the ladder and landed on the moon's powdery surface at 10.56 p.m., he said one of his most famous quotes, "'That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.'" Aldrin followed Armstrong on the Moon's surface 19 minutes later, where they took photographs of the Moon and erected a US flag. This was followed by a few simple scientific experiments and a telephone call with President Richard Nixon. NASA would repeat the Moon landings five more times before calling it quits on December 14, 1972. In total, NASA landed a dozen people on Earth's satellite. Harrison Schmidt and Eugene Cernan of the Apollo 17 mission were the last people to set foot on the Moon, 
The remaining three of the planned 20 Apollo missions were cancelled. The next obvious step after conquering the moon was to establish a permanent foothold thereon. NASA could then extend into establishing a fuel depot for sending spacecraft to deep space, facilitating the launch of massive space observations such as the James Webb Space Telescope, preparing for human trips to Mars, or even kicking off tourism to the moon. However, numerous obstacles stood in NASA's way. While the spirit of competitiveness fueled the endeavour at first, there was opposition to the entire mission. Not everyone at the launch area was clapping on the day Apollo 11 lifted off. A group of 500 largely African-American protesters, led by civil rights activist Ralph Abernathy, assembled outside the Kennedy Space Center gate a few days before the launch. They brought mules and a wooden cart to emphasize the disparity between the gleaming white Saturn V rocket family and others who couldn't afford food or a proper place to live. Abernathy was a close ally of Martin Luther King Jr. In reality, the Apollo space program divided the American people. Although some supported the mission and regarded it as a uniting and revitalizing effort, others saw it as a waste of money and misguided priorities. The last group believed that the money would be better spent on American societal problems. The argument was whether America should have spent $20 billion to win a race to place the first men on the moon, or if the country could have used that money and political capital to address a slew of global issues such as racial discrimination, pollution and gender inequality. Is the narrative different today? No, it is not. Public interest in lunar exploration remains tepid. At the height of the Apollo 11 program, just 53% of Americans believe the effort was worthwhile most of the time. Recently, more over 57% of nationwide respondents to an insider survey agreed that returning to the moon is an essential objective for NASA, but that percentage does not represent the entire picture because just approximately 38% believe NASA should send actual and breathing humans back. Others who want the US to explore the moon argue that robots could undertake the lunar exploration. But Americans are not entirely opposed to primitive expeditions to outer space. NASA should prioritize sending people to Mars, according to 63% of respondents. Elon Musk may have no issue finding volunteer colonists for his Mars vision, but 91% believe NASA should concentrate on watching the skies for dangerous asteroids. Another huge issue NASA faced was funding space missions, especially when crude is so expensive. You simply cannot undertake risks with human life, which seriously complicates missions. For example, NASA's budget for the entire 2022, Congress allocated $24 billion, which sounds like a lot of money, but when you consider all of NASA's programs, it's clear there isn't enough to send people to the moon. The JWST, for example, cost around $10 billion. NASA also funds the Space Launch System, SLS, which has proven to be a money pit. NASA has also awarded SpaceX a roughly $4 billion contract for a lunar human landing system. In comparison, the US military received $777 billion. However, NASA's budget has dropped throughout the decades. It peaked at 4% of the federal budget in 1965, but has been considerably below 1% for decades. But what if the United States funded the Apollo missions today? What would the cost be? A cool $120 billion. But there's more. A 2005 NASA report indicated that returning to the moon will cost around $104 billion, which would be more than $133 billion now due to inflation. This leads us to another problem with returning to the moon, politics. As the president and administration changed, so did the federal government's focus. For example, take Trump. If his plans had worked, NASA would have returned to the moon at the conclusion of his second term, but he was not re-elected. Preparing for a manned voyage to the moon takes longer than the conventional two terms of a sitting president, and incoming presidents and legislatures frequently abandon the preceding leader's space exploration ambitions. So where does NASA stand in the midst of such regular changes? These costly priority switches have resulted in cancellation after cancellation, resulting in a loss of around $20 billion and years of squandered time and momentum. Aside from public support, funding and politics, NASA's return to the moon has another challenge. Going to the moon is extremely tough. The moon may seem beautiful in the night sky, but it is a death trap for anybody who dares to journey there. 
You may see images of the Apollo astronauts waving and smiling at the camera, but they came near to death more times than they could count. In fact, President Nixon had a planned statement in case the astronauts died. Did you know that NASA believed the greatest danger of fatality was Armstrong and Aldrin not being able to launch while leaving the moon to rejoin Collins? The agency planned for such a contingency, and it was much worse than you could imagine. If they had been unable to launch, Armstrong and Aldrin would have been stranded on the moon, and the two men would have had the choice of starving to death or attempting suicide. The moon's surface is riddled with craters and rocks, making landing very dangerous. Prior to the landing in 1969, NASA spent billions of dollars developing, deploying and transporting satellites to the moon to map its surface and aid mission planners search for suitable Apollo landing locations. Consider how awful it would have been if the Apollo lunar module had landed on overly soft terrain and sunk. However, even before stepping out of the lunar module, the astronauts and NASA back on Earth had to contend with a threat, regolith or moon dust. You have no idea how fortunate you are if you don't have to deal with regolith every day. Even sunlight will attempt to kill you on the moon since there is a 14 day stretch of sunlight and you are fully at its mercy. If you survive, you will face another 14 days of full darkness with some of the harshest temperatures in the cosmos attempting to annihilate you. So when will NASA return to the moon? The world's largest set of doors opened on March 17 to display an aeronautical marvel at the Kennedy Space Center in Merritt Island, Florida. There in NASA's largest facility stood its newest rocket, the most powerful ever created and over 100 meters tall. That nightfall, a massive wheeled platform gently slid out of the facility, bringing the mega rocket through the coastal night to its launch site. And unlike any rocket in the last half century, it will transport humans to the moon. NASA intends to use it to return humans to the lunar surface more than 50 years after the last US astronauts walked there during the Apollo missions. The upcoming program is called Artemis, after Apollo's twin sister in Greek mythology. NASA plans to launch the space launch system, a mega rocket, later this year to kick off the Artemis era. This mission, called Artemis 1, will travel around the moon and back without a crew for a period of 26 to 42 days. NASA wants to accomplish its next massive objective of landing people to the lunar south pole by the end of 2025. NASA has hired companies to deploy a succession of robotic landers to the moon in support of the Artemis mission, which will carry NASA funded equipment to examine the moon's surface and improve the science that may come from astronaut missions. Let us know in the comments section what you think about NASA returning to the moon.